Am I on? Can you hear me? We can hear you. <laughs> How are you? All right, lad. What's going on? Man, we're chilling. How are you doing? Yeah, chilling. Same old. Oh, okay, all right. Apollonia just wants to say hello. Oh, hi, Apollonia. Hey. Say hey, hi. sweetie. Say hello, then. You know, all right. What's going on? You're hanging out with your, your Giza dad? <laughs> say hi, yeah. We'll first kind of, Liam, ask you about what you've been up to and all that, and then uh, then we'll talk about the game. He's got longer now, or what? Christ. <laughs> I think he hasn't he hasn't cut it, has he? Nobody can cut it now, man. I can't go to the barber shops. <laughs> How you keep it trimmed up? There's no way you're social distancing with that mop, huh? No, I had to uh, get it done before, but now I'm really struggling. I'm starting to feel the pain. I need my hair cut. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to a pre-show, so to speak, of PTFC from the archives. Today we're showing MLS Cup 2015. We have the two center backs from that game, Nap Orchers and Liam Ridgewell. Liam, first of all, you're in England. Uh, how have you been? What have you been up to? Congratulations on retirement. How's life? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, life's good at the minute. I mean, obviously, with the stuff going on at the minute, obviously, it's very difficult. Um, you know, just trying to keep everybody safe and make sure everyone stays at home and sort of reiterating everybody what, what people are saying and that in England uh, and all, all over the world, I suppose. But, yeah, just, you know, enjoying retirement at the minute before this, playing a little bit of golf, uh, spending as much time with the family as possible, uh, just trying to enjoy my time before I sort of make steps into the uh, coaching management career and, uh, yeah, just trying to uh, relax as much as possible, to be perfectly honest. We're looking back today on, on MLS Cup um, and we'll kind of lead in into that broadcast. And so I want to set the scene first and foremost of, of that season. Uh, if we, it wasn't sure the whole season that you guys were, were going to even make the playoffs. Maybe you were sure about it, but from yeah. you know, the standings perspective, right, it was – it wasn't always going to be there, but at the end, you, you guys turned it on. What happened at the end of that season that, that led you guys to be playing so well heading into MLS Cup? Yeah, I mean, like, like you said, the start of the season didn't start so well, as I remember. Um, we sort of had a, a purple patch going into sort of the summer period. But for me, looking back at it, I think the turning point, I don't know if Nat will probably back me up on this, probably LA away, if I can remember, um, where we had that amazing <clears throat> win. Um, and, and performance actually and uh, it was sort of everyone was writing us off and we still you know after the purple patch through, through the summer I think it was we sort of it, it gave us the confidence to to realise that we we were a good team and we could do something special uh, and my my recollection was the LA game sort of changed everybody and you could see everybody going actually yeah we you know it's just installing that belief and and that LA game um, which I think Shara actually scored in. I think that's probably the first one of many that he's, that he's scored in that game. But uh, yeah, I think that was probably the back end of that one was probably the main um, sort of start to uh, to making the run. Yeah, and it was it was interesting. Uh, like Reggie said, you know, we had a, a tough a tough spot kind of going. You know, we, we started slow. Uh, we had a few results mixed in in the summertime that were decent. Uh, we never really caught our our, I don't know what you want to call it, but, you know, we got a momentum going until the end. But I remember Valeri was out uh, at the beginning of the season. He didn't come in until, like, the Montreal away game. We couldn't score. I mean, we were having, you know, trouble just, like, getting the attack going. So we're, you know, a, a lot of time just kind of sitting back and, you know, absorbing a lot of pressure than trying to, you know, counter. And, you know, I think our identity, you know, and, and Ridgie and I talked about it a lot that season was like, hey, we're, we're fine just, like, you know, bring it. You know, we'll sit back. And then, you know, like, we'll just let the, let the guys run, let D take the ball, yeah. you know, let Tara take the ball, um, you know, play it up to, to Valeri. And we know we can get goals with, with those guys. And, uh, you know, you kind of saw it all come, come together in the L.A. game. And that was a lot of fun because we actually went down. <clears throat> I want to say we were down 2-1 at halftime. I think you're right, yeah, yeah. And then we, uh, we turned it on in the second half. And it was like, you know, we had that belief, like Ridgie said. And, yeah, it all kind of fell into place after that. Won that game five to two. You guys kept kind of winning all the way to MLS Cup. Let's fast forward to Columbus. 
One thing that strikes me about that game and that day is was a scene from the documentary that the Timbers put together called The Magic Was Real. It's it's a camera on the bus as you guys are going to the stadium and everybody's singing and like banging on seats. The team seemed to be really loose. What do you remember about the feeling in the group leading into the game? Yeah, it was amazing. I think we we I think within the team we knew that we, we were gonna win or knew that we were gonna perform well to know that we give ourselves the best chance. Yeah, there's, there's things that can happen in the game and, and things can change and, and, and sway. But we were so comfortable within a team. And I spoke a little bit about this earlier with uh, an interview I did before. It, with the team, we were so together and so tight-knit uh, and so knew what the other person was doing. It didn't, didn't make a difference who was playing and, and, and things like that. So on that bus, it, it did, really did show how the team was feeling and how confident we were going into that game. Now, everybody else didn't know that, but we were so confident and felt so relaxed about getting to the game. I think it showed as soon as, we, as, soon as the game kicked off and, and showed in our personality in the game. Yeah, we'd, we'd gotten to Columbus as well and won earlier in the season mm. uh, and scored a really good goal. Uh, it was actually just probably one of the better goals we scored all season. We won the ball in the back, and it was like three passes, and we were in the final third, and we scored a, a really good counterattack goal. And... I think we just had fence on the road, you know, after all we'd been through, you know, we, we just gone and weathered so many storms on the road as well. Right. Our mentality was so, was so wrong. And we were just like, you know what, like home or away, we're, we're going to, we're going to get the job done. And obviously, you know, defensively, we felt really good. It's like, you know what, uh, we've got a really good back line, good communication. Uh, Alvis and, and Jorge were, uh, you know, studs, uh, you know, take care of the channels and the really I didn't want to so we we're like hey guys you know you take care of that stuff we got the center of the park and uh you know we we're good <laughs> we talked about the feeling on the bus it's getting to the game it didn't take you guys long to get on the scoreboard 27 seconds diego valeri what do you guys remember from from the back of watching that goal <laughs> thinking what the heck just happened and <laughs> now obviously think we obviously kicked off and then it's they sort of played the it went back to the right back or back to sort of the midfielder, back to right back, then back to the goalkeeper. It, it sort of went slow-mo and just sort of hit into Valeri and then deflected into the net, which was, you couldn't have asked for a better start, which Valeri called that he looked up and realised on video that they'd always do that and said that he he, uh, he meant to do it. But I just thought he was just closing down the keeper. <laughs> I mean, I, I was I honestly... You know, there's those, those pre-game jitters you have, you know, and, and in, mm. a, in a championship game, you know, Ridge, you know, in those big games, you, you always want to settle into the game as quickly as you can. So you're always thinking first challenge, first touch, uh, and you want something good to happen. So the ball goes back there. And honestly, when when, when I saw Valeri slide in there, I, I, I didn't think that the ball had gone in the back of the net. I, I just thought he would put some pressure on the goalie. Maybe it hit off him and <clears throat> deflected for a goal kick. Which you know me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And when I saw the guys go to the sideline to, to celebrate the corner flag, I was like, I looked at Richie, I was like, I guess, I'm, I guess we're headed up there, man. I guess we did. <laughs> like, but, but then the, the funny thing is after that, I don't know if you felt this way, Richie was, I was a little bit worried because you mm. score that early in a game, you're away from home, and you know that the, the away teams, they're going to be after you. They're going to be flying. So I was like, yeah. well. Oh, we've got a work cut out for us. <laughs> yeah. We know we had our work cut out, but that really was making our work yeah. out for us. Yep. <laughs> you guys get the second goal, seven, seventh minute, right? The ball's out of bounds, but Columbus stops, you don't. Um, that's got to be a dream start. It was unbelievable. And even from where I was or where we was, it, I thought, well, that's out. Sort of, you know, that will probably, you know, just, just, just be called. But obviously it didn't. And then sort of D carries on and I'm thinking sure he's going to get called back but anyway no it doesn't and then obviously Lucas it was Lucas obviously whips that ball in and Ronnie just comes running from the, obviously from the back to stick it in the back of the net and just I mean I'm, I'm, as we always did when we scored me and that would look at each other and be like right well, you know let's go so you know it was like sort of running forward to go and celebrate and then as we got to Rodney it was just I just suddenly saw these bottles and plastic stuff everything was just getting thrown at us and I thought God, this is this is proper. Like you know, if that was a, sort of that point. I thought, oh God, you know, like they ain't going to be happy. We're going to be having our back, backs against the wall here, and just sort of obviously buzzing to start the game off how we did. 
Yeah, cra- it was crazy. I, I, I it thought it was surreal. Uh, yeah, that, to, you know, I thought the ball was out of bounds. I mean, you know, I was playing right center back, so I, I got a decent look at it, and I was like, oh, they're going to call that back. Like, you know, there's no way that's going to count. Play carries on, you know, score the goal, and everything kind of just stopped. It was just like – and it was like madness behind us because that's where our supporters were. But then where we were going to, to, to celebrate, it was just – nothing and then they started throwing the the beer cans and and uh, i remember trying to catch them i think it was it was uh, Bud light or coors light i was like trying to catch them uh and i was thinking about taking a sip but i was like well we have got another what uh 80 minutes left in this game or so <laughs> you called it you called it proper liam i mean like you did you, you guys were all right with that i mean how, how are you feeling when stuff's getting thrown at you loved it it was quality i thought you know i just thought well what a way to start the game you know they were all you know we've had some right ding-dongs down there when we've gone to sort of columbus you know we've had uh, you know arguments down there or they've come to our place and we had arguments and, and sort of never really went smoothly the games you know we, we used to get cool we used to normally play them in the height of summer so it was a really tough place to go you know especially for me so you know, going there and they were chucking beer bottles and stuff that's, you know, made me think, actually, we're doing something really good here. You know, we're going to shut them up and we, you know, and I thought this is just going to, this is the way to start the game and hopefully we can continue to go on, on, obviously on to win. They scored in the 18th minute, Kai Kamara, so it's 2-1 and that was it for, for the scoring in, in the game. And yeah. It felt mm. relatively comfortable, I mean, for you guys. I think you guys still controlled the game. What, yeah. what was your feeling on, on how, how you were able to do so well defensively the rest of the time? I mean, it was, uh, you know, me and that, you know, I think that'll tell you, we, the build-up was Kai Kamara. You know, that was, it was all about him. It wasn't about anyone else. It wasn't really anybody, about any other players, about his unbelievable scoring record throughout the season. I think he said a few things as well in the build-up. And, you know, it, it definitely made me um, more aware and more, even more not wanting him to score. So when they did score that goal, which was a scruffy goal, and we should never have conceded it, because that was the most annoying thing about it. It was so scruffy. Um, yeah, it was. It was like two one here. But like Nat said previously, we we we've done it. We did it so many times that season, and done it so many times before. It was that was that's what we wanted. Yeah, that was in our wheelhouse. You know, our defending and our we to break us down. It weren't going to happen. So uh, you know, we stood us in good stead. I'd rather have had another couple of goals go in if the boys were let us have, have them, but they, they didn't like to do that that season. So uh, we had to back the wall to defend. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of, that was the mo. Just uh, you know, get the lead yeah. and and be able to like you know a lot of people who don't understand soccer, you know, they won't understand that you can control games defensively, and we were we were comfortable mm-hmm. that way, right? You know, we, yeah. we we were fine just sitting back in at times, you know, making it making it tough. We had. You know, Chara in front of us, uh, you know, taking care of the dirty stuff. I mean, we had D playing the holding midfielder as well. Yeah. It was kind of a, a game changer for us. Going back mm-hmm. to the L.A. game, right, where we were away, he, he played centrally, and it was like, give him the ball, he turns, and he's, he's gone. Or give him the ball, and he's able to make, you know, connect mm-hmm. passes. And, uh, we just kind of knew, you know, having, you know, that lineup and that, that group that we were going to be fine the rest of the game. I don't really remember being challenged a whole lot, them having no. chances the rest of the game. I just felt like, you know, we were really solid. And, again, you know, credit to the group and um, the mentality. We were just – we were solid. You got robbed of an MLS Cup gold, didn't you, Nat, by Steve Clark late in that game? <laughs> um, yeah, unbelievable, man. I, I, <laughs> I was um, – I was, you know, credit to Steve Clark because I, I thought, you know, after giving up that first goal – you could easily just mail it in, right, and just say, "Hey, yeah. we're not, you know, I'm done. You know, I, I made my mistake, my mistake, and I let the team down." He had a, a fantastic game because we had chances. I think Adi had a big chance. You know, I had that chance. Uh, I remember the chance I had. Valeri just swings one in off of a, I think it was a corner kick that turned into a second chance. He cut. He came. He swing it in. I was back post. That's like, you know, perfect for me. I had yeah. the ball down. You know, I thought I did everything right, and somehow. Clark just nailed it at the front post or at the near post. And I was like, well, I guess I don't get to celebrate, you know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good. I mean, uh, you know, but Hey, we got the, we got the win. That's all that matters. 
post game, you guys get to celebrate uh, in front of the Timbers army. There were a lot of Timbers fans there. Did you guys? Feel that? Yeah, I mean, I mean that that is Portland Timbers. You know that that was, you know, I think a lot for other people that that would be a surprise, but that for us that was that was just normal. You know, for me that was not so many people there for them. You know, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. They were they were unbelievable, and they they were singing out singing Columbus. You know, you think in their home and. They sort of made it as a home ground, really. And um, to do that there, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy that we never won an MLS Cup in front of the Timbers fans, you know, at home, which would have been amazing. I think that would have been absolutely brilliant. But they made it like a home game and, and made it something special and be able to do that in front of them at the end. You know, sometimes away, it can be better because obviously, you know, you sort of, sticking one on Columbus and, 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 and sticking it up them and it, it could make it a little bit more special. So it, it was, yeah, it was, a, it was a special, certainly afterwards, it was great. Yeah, those celebrations were, were incredible. When that whistle blew, you know, I know Ridgie and I were just like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> like we jumped into each other's arms and we're like, uh, yeah. you know, because we, we just, we'd been through so much in a season and, and like I'd only been on the team, you know, one season, but I felt like, it had been, you know, a lifetime you know, with as much yeah. as we grew and, and, you know, as much as we kind of struggled throughout, throughout that year to kind of find ourselves and, and like the vindication you get when that whistle blows and then the celebration afterwards and it weighs in the cup and, you know, with the fans on, on that far side and, and, you know, just celebrating with uh, everybody who was a part of it, man. It was, it was just incredible. Let's talk about that picture in the locker room. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's on Liam's Instagram. It's a little not safe for work. Let's call it PG-13. <laughs> what, how did that happen? What's the story? Hey, we got the uncensored one, if you fancy that one. <laughs> yeah, thanks for posting that one, Ridgie. Uh... The family show. <laughs> yeah. No, I think um, it was afterwards. Obviously, I'd stripped down. Nat had stripped down to, to reason. It was like, um, we, were, oh, well, uh, we were just drinking and obviously having fun. And it was like, right, let's go and have a photo. And I'm sure Nat said to, I'm sure it was Nat who said to me, come on, let's just go, let's go and like this. Let's just, oh, well, was I was already in there now. I can't remember if I was already uh, in there. So I think Sean McCauley was in there uh, when yeah. I came in there and I saw you and you just like, you started yeah. taking them off and I was like, <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. But, I mean, yeah, we're all, we're all pretty buzzed then too. So who knows? That yeah. was uh the celebration just continued, right? I mean, both in, in Columbus, uh, back mm -hmm. at the airport in Portland, to the parade. Yeah. What stands out to you the most about the aftermath of that game? Cool. I mean, you know, the, 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 ma the massive thing that stands out for me is the parade. Um, you know, when it, Premier League, you know, Champions League, whenever people win something, you know, they go on this big parade and they have everybody that comes out and they support them. and, and um, Unbelievable, and I'd never experienced that ever in my career. And um, it's one thing, obviously, going to Portland, that was one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to win something, so it was sort of a, a combination of everything to be able to do it for myself and to make sure that Portland won something in my time while I was there. Uh, but coming home and, and getting outside, I mean, it was pissing down the rain. We were thinking, oh, there'd be a few hundred, maybe. I don't know, there, there'll be a lot, but not what there was and as soon as you turn that street and so I mean you know it gives me goosebumps now but turn that street and, and starting to drive up there it was like you just look around at each other, each other and think wow like, this is this is amazing people hanging out the windows and you know I wish it could have gone on for days but it was yeah it was amazing one thing that actually sticks out still down today yeah I didn't I didn't expect that either the the you know the celebration coming back home and and being you know on that float with all the guys you know we were you know we had beer in there we were just partying and it was like uh, all bets were off like you know yeah. will was having will was having interviews on there dropping f bombs we went back to the state <laughs> Liam's dropping f bombs everybody's kind of saying their piece nobody cares uh, it's just unscripted uncensored but it was awesome i mean because we had we had personality on that team that's the thing that you need in in the game you need to have you know, different personalities with, you know, guys that have edges, right? Guys that uh, want to win, guys that, you know, are hungry. And uh, we had that in that group. And then to celebrate with that group, you know, like, uh, I just remember it just so much fun. And I, I just, I don't think you'll ever have, you know, 
as a player, you never have that experience, uh, something like that. Uh, I never had anything like that in my career, you know, where it was that big of a celebration because it just showed how much it meant to it did, you know, yeah. there was fans yeah. in the community, right? And, uh, you mm. know, <laughs> how much fun was that? I'd love to do that again. <laughs> As you guys look back on, I kind of wrap it up, but with, with you guys as a, as a center back pairing, as you mentioned that, I mean, that was just one year, right? I mean, that, yeah, well, you were only playing for a year and a half, basically. Um, mm. what, what, like, clicked with you two that, that led to such a successful pairing? For me, it was just knowing each other. You know, as soon as Nat turned up for me, it was like, right, he's a defender. Not, not that the previous defenders for me weren't defenders, but Nat turned up there with the mentality to go, right, we're just going to defend. We are just going to make sure we defend. Keep us, uh, you know, we spoke about it. How many clean sheets can we make that season? That was that was our mo. That was that's what we want to do. We want to keep as clean, many clean sheets as possible, and that's what we worked on. You know, we worked day in day out to know what we both could do and what we both needed to do to defend. Everything around the box, you know, front post. You know, not even to have to worry about anything behind you. Just front post. You just go there, and I've got everything behind you. And when I did it, I knew Nat was there. And when, I, when he was there, he knew I was there to, to bump it up. So it was just knowing each other of wanting to defend and keep a clean sheet. And that's, that, that sort of instead of all, all match, all yeah. season. Right? Yeah, it was, yeah, it just clicked. I, I agree. And I was like, you know, I remember, you know, texting you when, when I first signed with the club and um, just having a little, little back and forth with you and mm -hmm. uh, watching some games and, and you know, Obviously, you know, when I came on the team, you know, you were the captain, you, you know, were you know, in control in, ter in terms of communication. So I knew mm -hmm. I didn't have to come in and like, you know, start fresh. Like you already had like your, your, your hold on the group. So, you know, I, I just had to come in and, and, and kind of plug in and make sure that, you know, I did my job, but it was like, it was fun too. Cause like we would have, I feel like I took my, my game to another level because before, you know, we didn't talk so much about the nuances of like, where's the D mid going to go when mm. we're, you know, in the box and what spaces he have to cover, you know, for like the cutback and just, and it, the, the cool thing about it was like, it was defending first. It was like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to score goals with as talented of a group as we had, but it was like, we're going to defend first. Here's what we have to do. Right. Box defending was like huge for us. Um, and we knew our responsibilities, right. It was like, if we yeah. did our job, and somebody didn't do their job, it was clear, right? And and when we obviously did our job and we put people in front of us in the right spots, it was like, you know, other teams didn't score goals. And, yeah, just – it was easy. What are you sipping on, Liam? What's the what's the choice tonight? Uh, I've got – it's called a governor, this one. Ah. As much as <laughs> – I'd like to call myself the governor, but I don't think that works at all. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a red, a governor. I, I really found my reds in Portland. Yeah. Foot guy, one of my friends, foot guy, Stephen Schroeder, one of my friends, obviously everybody knows, uh, took me wine tasting and, uh, yeah, love, love a drop of wine. So it's, it's, it's 10 o'clock somewhere, right? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cheers to that. Great yeah, to catch yeah. up with you, Liam. Nat, Liam, great to talk to you guys about this game. Uh, let's all watch mm -hmm. it together now. It's Sunday, 3 p.m. on Fox 12 Oregon uh, or on Timbers FC, uh, Timbers.com, um, whenever you want. Uh, the Timbers and the Columbus Crew, the 2015 MLS Cup, this weekend's edition of PTFC from the archives. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Make sure everybody goes and watches it and listens to our conversation. But, uh, no, really appreciate it. Nice to catch up with you both. It's been too long. So hopefully I'll see you in the flesh soon. <laughs>